All right, welcome back to our Writer's Lab, and we're going to meet with the lovely Diane G. Robertson, who will touch on TV programming. Thank you all for staying with us on this lovely Thursday morning. All right, so we're looking at Diane's credits. She's the head of TV programming at TTT, 20 years in broadcast television, film production, and multimedia CBS affiliate, Washington, D.C., crime drama series, City of Lost Souls, Maryland, film, Ota Rosa, Washington, D.C., experience in TV studio production, promotional script writing, on-air promotions, community engagement, on-air voice talent, held above the line roles in independent film, screenwriting, producing. So I know Brian is asking in terms of how the type of money you earn from being a script writer. Hint, hint, wink, wink. You could probably ask Diane. I'm founder of Moving Mountains Productions, being communications, TV production, Howard University. All right, Diane, over to you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Everyone hears me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone had a um, nice, enjoyable, refreshing beverage during your break. I am honored to join Film TT and represent TTT today. Today, my focus in reg with regard to uh, the TV programming is the pitch. And just going to flesh out that in terms of specifying how TTT would go through the process, because that's where I am now. In a former um, time, I would be, have been at a PBS affiliate. And so I'll marry the two and give an, a little bit about that experience and just um, let you know what we're doing now at TTT since I've been there just under two years. Um, next week will be two years and uh, with PBS for 12 um, before returning home in 2018. So I am going to first, before I begin, just ask you guys a question. I wanted to know if you can do your hand, do a show of hands, hands up. How many writers do we have? Um, you just raise your hands on, on, on the uh, option there to raise hands. Of here today. Uh, thumbs up, okay. Just any reaction will do. Awesome. Awesome sauce. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six. Darren, did you say you were a writer? Darren Despot? All right, how many producers do we have in house? Okay. Okay, we have anyone that's on a technical side, either your cameraman, your director, a DP. Okay. All right. We have any actors <laughs> or talent? Aspiring talent. Okay. I see you, Julie. Very nice. All right. Thank you, everybody, for participating. So I'm going to dive into my, make sure I share my computer sound here, presentation. So today we're going to be talking about the TV network pitch. And this is going to incorporate the process through which um, PBS in particular would have formalized um, the way that they would like to receive content. PBS has over 300 stations, affiliate stations throughout the country and of the United States and the um, including that includes Puerto Rico, of course and they would um, have a systematic way in which they would want to have persons pitch content to them. They PBS of its own, um, although they be, begin to um, collaborate on things like Sesame Street and things of that nature, most of it is acquisition. And so they would you know, put a fishing net out pretty much and they have rules through which that you would have to 
pitch or submit to them. TTT in the same fashion um, as a result of where we are now is, you know, as you all know, TTT was relaunched in 2018 and shortly after I joined uh, the team there. And so TTT as well, you know, everyone got excited. There's a lot of buzz and people, you know, they want to pitch this and they want to, I have an idea here and, you know, so now there's a systematic way in which to weed through all of that in order to engage with content providers, engage with local um, creatives because of the nature in which um, the business is in particular for TTT in particular at this point in time, right? So one of the, the first point in this whole pitching scenario is submission. And um, when you hear the word submission, no, I don't want you to think about the state of being obedient or any of that. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the act presenting a proposal or an application. So it is required in the PBS system before you get to meet anyone and even at the other commercial networks, unless you're at the level of a Leonardo DiCaprio or someone of that nature, and you already have an in with um, studio boss and that type of thing, you pretty much, you're going through the process of submitting through an agent and you're submitting um, a proposal, you're submitting a script, okay? And particularly here, the situation is because there are so many situations where people want to get involved with the television station, um, it becomes overwhelming. And so there's a system that needs to be put in place so that they could streamline um, what works, what doesn't, what matches, um, what the station is trying to accomplish and that type of thing at the proposal. Okay. So what you need to know before you start writing a proposal or trying to initiate that pitching um, process is you want to know who you're, whom you're, who you're pitching to, right? You want to know what they're about, what is their mandate or their mission or their vision and that sort of thing. And get to know more about the type of content that they're looking for. And if you don't know, that's fine. Don't feel bad. It's simple. Just make a phone call, right? At, you know, I'll give you guys my extension if you need to call me directly at my desk. Um, call TT at the end of this, you know, if you be like, what you're looking for? Leslie asks me that all the time, right? Leslie Anna film TT. She asked me, Diane, what you're looking for? You're looking for cooking. Is that okay? Are you looking for a comedy? So she just ask, you know, what you're looking for? So she can assist directing persons to match what we're looking for. And so if you know, just, if you don't know, just ask, right? But do do your homework um, when you're preparing to go that next level of you've written your script, you, right? Um, you've pulled a team together, you have some kind of draft, rough draft, and you want to see if this television station is interested. So at this point in time, TTT would um, receive two types of content, right? We would receive that which is incompleted, and then we would receive the completed content. And when we say incompleted, what we refer to incompleted as um, is content that is written, content that um, is about to be shot, and content that's not um, in the can ready to go. Then there's content where we consider completed because it's there's a pilot that's been shot and they have, or there's, there's a series already in place, but they just don't have anywhere to distribute it um, over the airwaves. So, so submission of proposals for those that are not completed, we're gonna tackle that first, right? Because that is the first line pretty much where uh, a lot of content that has come across my desk, I noticed that 
It's someone calls, hey, I have an idea, you know, or um, my friend was telling me, you know what you all should do? So what has to happen, the phone calls, what ha happens, and not just for myself, but unless there's a conversation <laughs> that's been had at a certain level with already injection of the funding and the injection of the players, most of the times, a submission of a proposal is what's needed in order to recognize what the, what's happening in that project and the potential of the project. So one of the first things that we would like to see is a title that is clearly stated and I am going to be using throughout this process um, Pop Penny on Point, which also the promo that was just, because that's an example of a proposal to pitch to, uh, now it's playing, playback, um, and I'm still using the P's, no pun intended, but that TTT engaged with and collaborated with to get to air and it's premiering today. So, so you want your title to be clear, your title as well is, even if it's a working title, you say in parentheses, WT, it's your working title, but we're gonna come back to it and um, work on that. I sat down with a young man who, he had shot a rough draft of a cooking show from a very fresh perspective, and but he didn't have a title that he had pinned down just yet. So we were okay with that because he had gone the distance of actually shooting a pilot and showing us from his unique perspective how this cooking show will be different from the regular stand up and let me show you how to make this and then you know you see the menu coming up on the side so that so that's fine if you don't have a confirmed title yet but in make sure that you refer to it as the working title right Next thing we want to see in the proposal is your synopsis, right? It's described here as a succinct outline of the subject or story of the program or a larger context out of which the story will evolve. And I know you guys have been in the business for a while, so pretty much believe everyone understands what the synopsis is, but just it's that three, four lines. Sometimes it's a very short paragraph which just describes what the project is about and how the project can, is connected to the writer or the creative and connected to the audience that the uh, creative is trying to reach, All right? And then, uh, this is my favorite part, the treatment. The reason why the treatment is my favorite part is because the treatment should give the reviewer of the proposal a clear indication of where the show is going. It should tell the story. It should provide every possible visual as much as is possible, because you can't provide every nitty gritty, like the host will be wearing an orange blouse on Monday morning and that type of thing. But as much as is possible so that the reviewer gets an idea of how the show will flesh out and how the show will be seen on television, not just for the buyer of the content, but or the acquirer of the content, but for the audience and it, how it will match in knowing their audience and, and that type of thing. So the treatment should be longer than three or four lines. It should be a, a paragraph or two in terms of television episodic um and then the next slide talks about that you do want to break down your episodes right you don't have to go into the detail as which the treatment will go into but you do want to give an overview of what your episodes will be for example if you're pitching a show about cooking let's go back to cooking the first episode might be how to make um, the best mango or pumpsite chow to go with chicken 
right? But you kind of know what you're building up to, whether you know it's a Christmas episode, um, happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the United States today. <laughs> um, and if you want to know if it, that's, that will be, of course, the United States the Thanksgiving episode, we want to know which episode it is and, and the Easter episode, you want to flesh out, especially since a series is typically 13 episodes, if you have 13 lined up, be sure to break that down. And the reason for this is that, again, the content buyer, it will want to know how is this going to look on my schedule? How is this going to look? Um, and of course, when you're t t uh, receiving content as well, you're thinking about your, one of top of mind is sales and top of mind is how do I look different from those that I am competing with for want of a better word, because you know, it's not truly re competing, but you know, you want to know how you stand out in the market with this project, okay? The project schedule is um, something that PBS in particular requires in when they're doing, uh, when they're asking for submissions, right? I've le leaned on my PBS background as well in, in pre preparing this. But for us at TTT, the project schedule is helpful in terms of, we don't need a breakdown, but we need to know Okay, if you're proposing this now, when do you intend to have your pilot shot? Or when do you intend, if we have the pilot, when do you intend to have the first episode? So we can gauge where it will fit when we are making a determination overall about the project. Okay? Did someone have a question? I heard an audio. Thank you. I'll keep going. So as I mentioned before, when you're submitting your proposal for consideration, and the proposal is just very important to streamline the process by which um, the content buyer, like ourselves, we I call buyer, and I'll explain that to you later on why I'm saying in quotation marks, or the broadcaster or distributor, um, is so to streamline the process in order to be, be able to evaluate all of the content that is coming to this station in a cross section, you know, of a way that's like leveled, right? And one of the things that is top of mind is sales. So in reviewing content that is I am the programmer that is proposed. Our sales, our person who heads our sales department is also part of that process, right? So we have a little team. So we always have sales at the top of mind and it counts for what we, how we will respond. So when you are doing your proposal, you want to include your budget. Include your budget because we're gonna be thinking about, okay, it costs you this much to produce, so you're gonna be expecting to earn this much. So can we, how can we, and when I say we, both parties benefit, right? And so all of that comes into, the, comes into play when proposals are being considered, right? And I would say this here, and just be very honest, proposals being considered here, proposals being considered United States or, or being considered um, commercial, full commercial stations, everyone's budget is different, right? So that's why it is a consideration. So what ABC or NBC may be able to do, and ABC has Disney and you know NBC has uh, the Comcast, Xfinity and all of that, is not necessarily what a TTT will be able to do. So the budget that you put out is fine, but the station as well, when it's thinking about how they're gonna to respond to your proposal, right? It's gonna be thinking about, okay, you're, you're gonna, you know, you're thinking, okay, like I, I was telling a story earlier that we engaged with, an, with a group 
who wanted to partner with us on um, a certain project. And we had to realistically look at in this day and age of COVID and just the popularity over the years of the particular subject of the project, are we going to be able to recapture the output that they claim that they would have to put out in production? If we can't realistically do that, we would find another way to engage, right? Because we have to take all of that into consideration. Hence why um, the point of include your budget. And also include your funders, right? And um, this is necessary because for several reasons. One, including your funders um, gives an indication that you've already started to find a way to offset some of the cost of your, your on your end of production. Two, when the station wants to engage, we want to know, okay, are these funders that we need to not engage with as well? Or are these funders we need to talk to about expanding their budget to airtime? So including funders is very helpful. All these things in the front end, so as the process gets going, you know time is lost, right? Okay, your business plan. Discuss the plans for completing, identify the potential for funding resources, and that's funding again, indicate the approach behind being taken to secure funding. So this just gives an indication of the thought process that goes into the um, proposal in terms of it, the business prospects for the program not just for the TV station, but also for yourself. Um, it as also assists with the partnering in which that takes place. And um, part of the business plan and the next thing, as you see, is there's audience engagement. Because if you don't have an audience, you don't have eyes, you advertisers have no one to sell to, right? So having all of that be a part of your proposal is very helpful. And I will uh, refer to the, and I'm going to show you in terms of the visual a little later, but in terms of audience engagement and that sort of thing, I wanted to just talk a little bit about POP again. When the presentation was submitted, there was thought into, and I'm just looking for the because um, of um, not able to share the their proposal and it's confidential. So what I what I can do is just give a idea of they went into these psychographics, the age demographics, and that type of thing, and um, how they will use social media. So um, and which social media platforms to be a part of the show's engagement. And this is based on the international model. The international model expects that the person pitching their piece knows how to enhance the show and make the show not just something that is flat. When I say flat, television is wonderful and it's beautiful and it's great, you know, but because I work in television, but in 2020, going into 2021, we all know we have to have that multiple um, cross-section of platforms going to engage. We have a Gen Z um, and we have a Gen Z, sorry, and the millennials. Um, and so including audience engagement and not just that, the more eyes, the better, because you're having persons, they may still be at work, but they have their headphones in the air, you know, they have their phone on the desk, whatever. So including audience engagement is only to your benefit, not just the stations, but it's also for your platform. And it's a multiple cross section of, because the, the brand of the television station may do some, you know, propelling of your material, your content, because when you post on Facebook, on also the TDT is your media partner, 
that that's one way that your content is like, you know, propelled with that partnership on your Facebook, on TTT's Facebook, on um, TTT's Instagram, but you also come up with, okay, how are we engaging our audience with this show? Another um, aspect that they have and the show starts tonight, but they already started doing it, is they have a segment called Guess Who? And they have polls on their Facebook page and we partner with them on the entire process. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my next slide. Okay, so if, sorry. So I'm gonna say that sample work is very important. And particularly for myself, um, just coming back into the country after 20 something years. Um, and as a programmer, TTT, I uh, tell you all a funny story, right? 20 something years. I, it, and I, I was very thrown into the, um, into my life abroad and I'm not a carnival person. So I was not here that often, a few Christmases here and there, but I was not here that often. So the funny story is that when my first came back to Trinidad and I was going, uh, started working at TGT and I was um, in meetings, names would just be flying over my head at meetings and I'd be like, Google, right? So sometimes the reality is that the person reviewing your proposals, they just don't know who you are, right? And people are like, you don't know who that is, but you, they just don't know. And it's no disrespect or no offense, you know, so if you have sample work, it may not be the precise project that you are sending in your proposal for or you're pitching, but if you have sample work, I would recommend including that sample work. So you could be like, um, the project not ready yet, eh? but this is what I've done before. So you can guarantee that this is what you, the kind of level of quality that you're gonna see. You'll be like, oh, okay, right? So that's a very key component that you want to include. And so one thing I wanted to mention is that among the genres of uh, projects that I will say TTT, put in a shameless plug, um, is would be looking out for is children's content, right? Among other things which includes the documentaries and the films, um, the narrative films and the cooking shows and the fitness and all of that, right? But one genre is the educational um, children's content, EI content. If you're proposing EI content, I have to say, sorry, that it should include, right? information about um, a research or documentation from educational advisors to support the program specific goals, right? So you should have there that you're working with, um, if it's uh, preschool education, you're working with experts in that field. If it's, um, you know, if it's a fun way of teaching kids how to read and write, and of course I come from this, the, uh, PBS background once again, so I have super Y in my head, because when I was rolling out, I was there at that time. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that show, but the educators that we had to um, talk with, and out of that came camps that uh, many of the stations got involved with, because PBS is very big on community engagement. So we got very big, we, we held actual camps, uh, summer camps, and they had to have advisors there about the summer camp, and, the curriculum and all of that. So just one caveat, if you're gonna, if anyone's out there looking to pitch educational programming, make sure it's certifiable, we're gonna be ensuring it's, it is as well, okay? And so if you need the entertainment part of it, include the educational part of it as well. All right. So going, we're moving right along, right? So then there's the other type of content that we, we receive on a regular basis. And this would be the completed projects. So they range from people have projects from they did in the past to things that they're now starting to do and they have one episode of it or they have 
one rough draft of it. Sure, send it along. Send it along a file video with um, show log line, right? And the log line is pretty much, yeah, elevates a pitch, just a few lines, just like, you know, uh, the shorter than the synopsis, um, talking about what it is that you are, the, the show is about. A description of the structure and the segment breakdown will be very helpful. Even if it's um, just that one show, you break down the segment, you don't have episodes. And any funding information that you already are involved with indicate the rights availability. Is this exclusive rights, um, which is preferable <laughs> um, for TTT in Trinidad and Tobago um, uh, and just for what time frame are you expecting and include as well your social media and other audience engagement. And um, we also would like to give, get a heads up on any language violence and et cetera, any relevant information that will assist in a review. Okay. And I just want to touch on the problematic content. Uh, TTT is over the air as well as cable. And with being over the air and being, um, being over the air in particular, we're guided by TAT guidelines. So they, they, they can ask me a question when we do engage about what are those things that are no-no. Um, cable might, you know, slide a little bit, but over the air, we wanna make sure that it's on the up and up and we honor the watershed, nothing outside of the watershed period that falls under the, um, what's in keeping with what TAT expects and in regards to being harmful to children and that type of thing. And now I'm going to ask guys. So when you're sending in your proposal, I wanted to say, let's get visual, visual, right? And I just wanted to use this pitch that we did receive as an example. When you're um, having a lot of proposals to review and go through, a lot of times it can be heavy in terms of reading and it just is helpful when you have um, something that is not that heavy. This was the, the blue and yellow and pink was on every page. This was, and this is the um, logo and this is the graphics and this is the branding that was maintained throughout the entire process. So from this to now, and I'll play the uh, promo again a little later, that was the thread throughout the entire process and it was what was in keeping with. So the, the level to which things occurred was, you know, of course, we went on to the next level and we went on to the next level and we went on to the next level, right? So you want to have a proposal that yes, we want to see details in the treatment area where we can read the story, but you also want to make it that much um, appealing so that it doesn't uh, necessarily get lost with the others and it's like, okay, it's, it's too much homework. So just, just a little tip um, to help your reviewers uh, through with the process. So it's okay to make your proposal attractive. It's okay to stick to the main thing and not be too wordy. It's okay to have a distribution and social media engagement plan that will complement the broadcasters. And it's okay to ask the distributor or broadcaster to sign an NDA. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to say, look, before we move ahead, and we've had that happen, before you, we put the PowerPoint presentation up, before we go through this slideshow, um, could you sign this for me, please? And we stopped, we reviewed the documents, and we signed it. Because confidentiality is, you know, of utmost importance, and we want to respect it as well. Okay? So I just wanted to touch now on the proposal review process. Proposals are reviewed on an ongoing basis. Responses are based on the station's needs and schedule. It's based on the viability and sales potential of the project, which is key factor. Because of the number of proposals received by TV stations, 
time should be given for consideration. And I want to just say there, um, no proposal should be submitted in advance. Uh, six to 12 weeks, for example, um, someone submitted the carnival platform proposal last early, early November. And that would give us enough time to review, to um, then to discuss, and then to roll out. So what happens sometimes, and it does happen sometimes, I have this, right? Sometimes it's okay because it might be for a specific occasion, whether it's Diwali, emancipation, whatever it is. But for the most part, the, that lead time to review, because we have to do a few things. We have to review. Uh, we have to see how we how we're going to engage, how we're going to partner. Then we have to get involved with the ad, the sales process. Then, we, so all of that, you know, takes requires lead time. If there's any reason that we have to get involved with production, you know, we have to that much more. So I would encourage, when sending proposals um, to the station or sending proposals to a station. Um, you want to look at that lead time in order to give the station time to see where does this fit into my schedule. Um, and also the station might be done, done with Christmas. So coming up, say, I have a Christmas, done, <laughs> right? So you want to look at like, okay, what's next? Carnival, you can squeeze in Carnival now, Easter, right? That type of thing. So you wanna definitely have that look forward kind of approach to submissions, right? So from the proposal part, it's selected and invited for further dialogue. So at TTT, um, a lot of times when proposals are sent in and the project is deemed viable, there is not just me, there's, like I mentioned, there's other um, key persons who would be involved in the process. So when engaged to have a conversation, we um, want to, one, keep it simple, not lengthy. Um, I liked something that Chandra Rhyme said um, in her masterclass, she said, no more than 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. Keep it personable, relatable, to whom you're um, talking with and um, do some research, you know, uh, get to know, you know, who are the people that you would be talking with, you know, what is their background, what are they like, um, as much as you can find out, you know, so you're coming to them, maybe you had a phone conversation with them before, I tend to be very, um, you know, just down to earth. So you know, it depends, you know, you might be pitching to a station and, you know, may need to be, you know, like this professional, but, you know, be professional always, don't get me wrong, but, you know, just engage based on who that person is, because you definitely want to be likable, definitely want to be likable. Someone might read your proposal and find that uh, this needs some work, but because you're likable, and I've, and I've done that in um, my other life, and <laughs> when I was working at PBS, um, there was a project that came across to me and the quality was not up to par for me to put on the PBS station. But the young woman was, she was just well, uh, she was easy to work with in terms of, she was open to learn, she was open to receive criticism, she was open to constructive criticism, she was open to receive feedback. And so what happened was a process of me pretty much doing, go back and fix this. She fixed it. I said, okay, now go back and fix this. She went and fixed it. Go back and fix this. And guess what? The program aired and, and began to be in rotation. And so, um, so even though sometimes it might be a situation of like, eh, we can't use this right now, but it might also be a situation of, okay, let's talk. Let's talk some more. And, and work together to get this on the air. Um, I know that at times, because it's a restart, that that happens where 
content is shown as is, but as we move forward, there's going to be a lot, lot more tweaking and critiquing and, you know, getting to where we intend to be, right? Of course, you want to include in your pitch how a show can be a win-win for the broadcaster. Appeal to their bottom line because they're going to be thinking about it. And you could appeal to it not just in terms of dollars and cents, you know, hard dollars and cents, you know, or you have to get the, the yuppies, which is the young urban professionals, you know, to buy into this. Or you might want to say like, no, this is good because, you know, if parents know that we're teaching their um, young men how to be respectful to women, and then we reach to the mothers by, you know, the brands that mothers like, and that, you know, you, want, you, you could pull on your heartstrings a little bit. Nothing wrong with that, you're right? Because as, especially as a public service, um, which is part of what we do, provider, um, in terms of uh, the national broadcaster, you know, you, you wanted, like, you could use the emotional core of the matter of your subject as well um, to get your message across, right? I hope that was clear, I'll answer any questions. So like I've been talking about using pop as my example for the, the entire time, and you guys have seen this during the intermission, but I just wanted to highlight again, the, this project has gone from pitch, I mean proposal to pitch, to now playback, right? And it starts tonight. And if you'll notice again that the Hi, I'm Penny Gomez. Hi, I'm Penny Gomez, and welcome to another episode of Pop, 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 Pop. Penny on Point with profiles on persons of interest. This is a show where we get to know some of your favorite personalities just a little bit better, where you get intimately involved because you can go on our social media pages and you have the opportunity to guess who is the person we're going to feature in this week's episode. Go online, submit your guesses. We provided clues for you and you do so for amazing prizes. Yep, it's about that time. I hear a doorbell. Is that the doorbell I hear? I hear the doorbell. I hear the doorbell. I hear a doorbell. Let's see who's pop by. Hello. Hey. Oh, this is This is called the No Hand That's how we do it at pop. So see you soon. Thursdays, 5:30 p.m. right here on TTT. Okay, so um, so that was an example of how I also wanted to, I, I hope you saw there that the same branding that was in, and of course things could change. It could change, you could tweak, you can update, but the, the forethought that went into what was being planned, the forethought that was, went, it was very thorough um, before even coming to the, the broadcaster. And I'd also like to add right here, um, what's very important, what also sells is not in my PowerPoint, um, but I'm going to say it, uh, that personality, personality is a, a selling point. So if you have a project that you're proposing, it may not be a talk show, but whatever it is, to find a way for persons watching to be able to identify with and to be able to want to watch um, that, that personality that you are demonstrating on screen. And sometimes the personality might be a love to hate the person, but they're still watching because of the personality, right? And I know that gets into, um, antagonist protagonist type things some, somehow, but you know, I'm gonna go there because that's um, <laughs> this is a specialty. But so I'd also like to add that. So in terms of the, what's in your proposal and what, what you're pitching, find a way of regardless of what it is. Um, I remember one of the pitches that we heard this year was children's content as well. And even though the, it was children's content, the um and the personalities were not human but the description 
of the personalities were just so real in order for local children and even local adults to identify with that it was that uh, much appealing. So just remember that, like it's someone that people could relate to, someone that like, hey, that's the girl next door. If not the girl next door, I could relate as the, as the child in my, in my classroom or somebody I went to school with or I worked with kind of thing. So as you can see, yeah, that Penny has that personality that we could say, yeah, you know what, this will work sort of thing, right? So that's just one aspect of what can cause one product or one proposal to go the distance, right? So after the proposal, after the pitch, the pilot is recommended. Um, the pilot further seals the deal. And this is like, if you don't have one, I would strongly recommend it. Or a trailer. Uh, television stations like to see something. Um, my head of sales, she likes to see something. I'm just going to tell you that off the top. She likes to see something, right? We have something, Erin, this weekend. She's just like, send me that promo. She likes to see something because she takes that and she runs with it because the market, they like to see something. Like all that talk is good, but I want to see something. That's basically what it is, right? So it's, I, I would recommend very strongly if you don't have a pilot, if you don't have a trailer, to work on something that complements your pitch because people want to see something. And if you cannot do it in video form, um, do the imagery in such a way that you pull it together in such a way. And I'll be honest with you, that's what um, happened with Penny on Point. We didn't, at the time of the pitch, we didn't have the trailer yet. Um, I saw the, the pilot after. But what happened was, in the pitch, the imagery in terms of what the episodes would look like was in the proposal. There was imagery um, that we could see with our eyes uh, so that we, okay, we, we caught it. I know, I, I don't know if I'm explaining that well enough. There were images of potential guests. There were images of what the uh, segments would look at, like with the graphics. So there was imagery, right? In terms of the audience engagement, so you got the picture, right? And, and the pilot also allows for feedback. I gave you that example of when I worked in Washington, DC, where I kept working with the producer to tweak and tweak and tweak till we were ready for broadcast. And, and so the pilot allows for feedback. And the pilot also allows for the broadcaster to elevate the stakeholders and possible sponsors, which is what um, I also said to you, and for our stakeholders, sometimes, you know, for them to get excited, like, oh, this is what you're all doing. Okay. Right. And for our possible sponsors as well. So if you don't have a pilot, if you don't have a trailer, I mean, shoot it on your phone, but just give an example of where you're going with it, because it is that much more helpful to actually see something. Yeah, I ask it all the time. <laughs> Do you have something? Um, sometimes persons have content that they already have in the can, and it's a former, it's the this, this season from 2019. And so they show you that as what's coming. And that is also helpful um, as an indication of, of what they're planning to do. And so they just um, update the information with possibly what the, who the guests are, or what the type of episodes are going to be and that type of thing, okay? So the next step is engagement. Well, we all know that means, you know, get married, but not really, but maybe. <laughs> so engagement is unique to each broadcast house accordingly. Engagement um, uh, for me at TDT is where I've uh, been, since I've returned I've, and in PBS, our engagement was unique there. So the engagement there was unique to my engagement when we're enga I'm engaging with content providers here. And so the engagement, even when we're here, engagement opportunities vary. And the engagement is dependent on the distributor's budget and the goals of the content provider. Engagement is a conversation and leads to a partnership, the happy marriage. So 
we if we see content that has potential we see content that we have to get on board we find ways of working to have that content showcased and but it has to be a situation where um, the expectancy is is very honestly laid out from the start and we address where we are what we could do how we could engage and and what's possible i explained earlier there's a story of one content provider where we were realistic about because of the subject matter you know and think that it's a hot topic on the nation's mind in terms of how advertisers will rally around it so we went back to like okay well let's do this instead because if that's the case then we do think you know they still thought you know it was you know they wanted us to be their platform and and we still thought that yeah you know this is community based so we went back to like let's see how we can work this out yeah right and i will i hope i didn't rush through that guys if i did i am sorry but i will take questions now <laughs> And what things will stay with you? The things I learned? What I rediscovered? Focusing on what really matters. On what makes me truly happy. And knowing my family's health is the key to enjoying life. Nestle cereals help you care for your loved ones with nutritious whole grains, vitamins and minerals to give them a better breakfast. That is why today, tomorrow and always, stay with the good things. Stay with Nestle cereals. Hi, I'm Penny Gomez. Hi, I'm Penny Gomez, and welcome to another episode of Pop, 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 Penny on Point with profiles on persons of interest. This is a show where we get to know some of your favorite personalities just a little bit better, where you get intimately involved because you can go on our social media pages and you have the opportunity to guess who is the person we're going to feature in this week's episode. Go online, submit your guesses, we provide clues for you, and you do so for amazing prizes. Yep, it's about that time. I hear doorbell. Is that the doorbell I hear? I hear the doorbell. I hear the doorbell. I hear doorbell. Let's see who's pop by. Hello. Hey. Oh, this is this man. This is called the no harm That's how we do it at pop. So see you soon. Thursdays, 5.30 p.m. right here on TTT.